fait diffuser. So hello everyone and welcome to our HEC Paris live webinar. So thank you for being connected with us today for our live session on understanding value creation presented by our professor, Monsieur Patrick Leblanc. So I am Suzanne Materne and I'm a program advisor for our MSc in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And I am speaking live from our HEC Jouy en Josa campus. So Patrick Leblanc is our affiliate professor from the finance department. He is a recognized veteran in the international finance industry, and he has been teaching finance and many other subjects for more than 15 years at HEC. So you must be wondering, my dear viewers, where is Patrick Leblanc? Well, he'll be here just in a few minutes. He's actually finishing a course at noon. It's noon here in Paris at our campus. And right now he must be rushing between the buildings of our campus to, to make it for our webinar. So please stay tuned. He is arriving very soon. So just a few more words about Patrick Leblanc. He is also the professor of one of the courses of our Master in Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and this course is Private Equity and Venture Capital. During this course, he prepares our students to understand investment banking in corporate finance, gain insights into private equity transactions and the venture capital industry, and help our students to make the best decisions for their entrepreneurial ventures. This course is given live through webinars like this webinar. I, as I was telling you, our uh, master is 100% online. And our students all around the um, planet connect at the same time as the professor, and they can participate, ask questions to the professor, interact together as for our on-campus courses. So before Patrick arrives, he should be here in a few minutes, I will share a few facts and figures about our business school, HEC, and our MSc. And then, of course, what you are all waiting for is Patrick's presentation about his course. Okay, so for those who don't know our school, HEC Paris, a few facts and figures about our school. It was founded in 1881. It is known as the first business school in Europe and ranked by prestigious uh, uh, rankings such as Financial Times. We are top 32 for graduation CEOs and for Fortune 500. Our school offers 45 diplomas, degrees, EMBAs, MBAs, Master in Management, which is the Grand Ecole, and many partnerships with prestigious schools all around the planet. We are also known, and that may interest the entrepreneurs who are watching this webinar, we are known as the first entrepreneurship school in France with a very uh, interesting incubator project uh, of HEC in the heart of Station F, the world's largest incubator, which is right in the center of Paris. So HEC is also, it's known as the excellency for its courses, but it's also very well known for its very powerful network. It is ranked uh, number one by The Economist in 2019 as the most powerful business school alumni network. There are 60,000 alumni, 100 nationalities, and more than 1,000 events organized per year uh, by our alumni network. So a few words about our Master in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. As I was saying, it is 100% online and in English, and it, it is hosted on the famous platform, our partner Coursera. So the fact that it's online is, gives it a lot of flexibility. You can work from your office, you can work from home, you can work when you're commuting. You don't have to travel and come to our campus or block many weeks for being on a campus. The duration of our course is 18 months, there are 20 courses. The first 10 courses are the fundamental courses and the next 10 courses are the project-based courses where you will work on a project in a team, and maybe on your own venture. That is something that I will be talking about more in detail later on. So we have intakes every six months, and the next is in the month of June, and the coming one will be in December. 
there is flexibility, as I was telling you, uh, because our, our master's is 100 percent online. But you also have to take in consideration that there are 20 hours of average of workloads per week. All the students follow the same rhythm and go through all the courses at the same time. And that's also something that we want to happen to have the whole students work at the same rhythm and being able to interact together regarding the courses they're going through, like for on campus course. This, this program is online, but we like to keep it also with the same spirit as an on-campus course. So I was telling you previously that during our master's, you work during 12 months on a project, on a real uh, uh, venture, entrepreneurial venture. So at the beginning of the project-based courses, all the students of our cohort will pitch a project Probably if they are already entrepreneurs, the company that they already launched, if they are planning to launch a new business, if they have the idea of a new product, maybe as an entrepreneur in their own company, well, they will be pitching their project. And at the beginning of those courses, after pitching, all the students vote. So the most convincing projects will be, of course, shortlisted and uh, will be selected to work on those 10 courses during the 12 months, uh, the 12 months of the project-based courses. Maybe you could be working on your own venture and you would be guided during those 12 months by entrepreneurs, uh, you would be coached, and you would be, of course, assisted by the professors and, of course, get the feedback of your teammates working on your projects. The, te the teams are usually three to five students working together on the project. And you will be, of course, assisted by professors, and certain of our professors are available for co phone calls during their office hours. So that's it for the project-based courses. So the courses are, during the project-based courses, are not simple online uh, downloads that you will get pre-recorded courses. No, the courses are given, like this webinar, through uh, live webinars. So the students are able to interact with the professors. They are able to participate, ask questions. And that's what HEC is really trying to keep in this MSIE, is to keep this campus uh, style um, for our courses, but on an online program, 100% online program. So a little bit more about our students. Here you get you have the beautiful photos of our students during the commencement day, the graduation day. Very proud of being here on our campus to get to receive their degree and to be together. We really try to create with our students, and we're happy to succeed in that, a community between them. Despite the fact that our program is very international, it's 100% online, there is a lot of interaction bet between our students. They have access to forums where they get to know each other, where they can talk and discuss, exchange about the courses, and learn from each other uh, about their experiences, maybe previous experiences as entrepreneurs, or maybe they are networking, developing an international network. Maybe they are trying to find a partner to expand their business. You may be, for example, a flourishing entrepreneur in Asia, and you're looking for partners to start developing your, your, your business in Europe. Well, this could be the opportunity to meet people who could help you for that. And of course, our students get to meet each other. Some don't wait for HEC to meet. They are maybe you know, living in the same country, on the same continent, or they are traveling, so they meet. And they also come to France if they wish, which is, of course, not an obligation, to participate to our, the events that we organize for them. They can even come and visit the campus if they want to. And of course, once they are graduated, they belong to the HEC alumni network, which will link them forever. So you may be, um, you may be uh, interested in applying for our MSc. So uh, there are different criteria. So the first one is to have hold five years minimum of professional experience, to hold a bachelor's degree, of course, to be proficient in English, since the, 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 the MSIE is 100% in English, and of course, to have a strong motivation in entrepreneurship and innovation. And do not forget, the average workload is 20 hours per week, so you have to have time to work and to learn uh, the knowledge which is given by our professors. So, if you have any questions, you shouldn't hesitate uh, you know, to, to uh, put them in the conversation. I hear that people were saying that some, some were having uh, sound issues, I can see, but 
hopefully uh, it's, it's, it seems to be better. If you have any questions on the master, since we are still waiting for our professors, well, maybe it's the time to ask your questions and I'll be attending them. So I'm looking at the questions. Uh, yes, someone asked, um, yes, it's Gen Gennaro Tehiri, uh, who was asking that, well, he says the sound is okay, what is the success rate of our graduates? Well, I, I would tell you, well, uh, once they are admitted by our jury, most of our students make it. I mean, that is the, the whole goal, is that all our students are graduated. In some exceptional cases, we have students who have to defer or abandon the program, maybe for personal reasons or professional reasons. And, but all the students who come in, everyone, most of them get graduated. And we have our learning coaches who are there, who uh, need, uh, who are there to make sure that you are working, that you are understanding the program and that you're having no difficulties with the, the format, the online format of our program. So there is a question about any standardized tests required for our international students. Well, as I was saying previously, you need to hold a bachelor. And in some cases, we do ask for an English test because if we have a doubt on the, the level of English, if, for example, a candidate doesn't have a degree in an English language, we do ask for an English test. Someone is asking, there should be advantages when you are on a campus. Yes, I do agree. Our students who, who come over and visit the campus, they can have access for the libraries, for example, and we organize you know, visits to make them discover the campus. So yeah, they can, they can access our campus and they can access the library whenever they want. So someone has a question about the five years of professional experience. Does it need to be only working experience or it can be so I'm not too sure I understand only working experience or can it be only working experience? Well, I would say we ask for five years of professional working experience after graduation. Internships do not count as a working experience. Someone else is uh, asking, Nicole, is a GMAT required? No, a GMAT is not required for our MSc. Okay, so. Our MSIE, the tuition fees, is 20,000 euros. So uh, you may be hesitant, maybe you don't have the profile yet, you don't have the five years of professional experience, or you don't have the funds yet, or maybe it's not the right time to start the MSIE. So there are also other possibilities of starting our uh, masters, or discovering or getting a taste of our masters. For example, you can start with the online master track certificate, the MTC. The cost is 4,000. Uh, dollars on the Coursera platform, and this gives you access to some of the courses of the fun fundamental courses of our MSIE, and you get a taste of our MSIE, and you have an access also to a few live webinars. So, so that really is an interesting way to discover our online program and uh, make sure that it really corresponds to what you're looking for. And of course, if you apply after completing the MTC, the credits gain and the prices will be deducted from the MSIE. Another way also of getting to, to, to a taste of our MSIE is discovering certain of the courses which are available as MOOCs and specializations for a very reasonable price on the Coursera platform. So that is it for me. And everything, of course, is available on the Coursera platform. So I'll go back to your questions. Uh, let me see if there are a few questions that I could see. So someone was asking, are there exams? Yes, there are exams, of course. Each course is validated by an exam, a proctored exam, so you have to be in front of your laptop and uh, you have to, to have an empty desk, your webcam on, and you will be proctored uh, through the exam uh, and that's how it goes. There are also assignments and quizzes and Monsieur Patrick Le Gland has arrived, so welcome. Good morning, Patrick. Bonjour. Thank you for coming. So I started my presentation, and right now I'm answering the questions Good. of our, our viewers about our masters. So they were asking about the exams, about our courses. And 
And uh, many other questions, is it GMAT, is it necessary? So I'm going to answer all these questions. So thank you for okay, being thank here, you. Patrick. I have already introduced you previously <laughs> to, to our viewers. So I just have a few little uh, uh, points I wanted to share with, uh, with uh, our viewers, and then it will be your, your time. If you, okay. As soon as you are settled and feeling okay. comfortable sure. in our webinar room, uh, I, will, I will give you the hand. Uh, I will give you the hand. Yes. So someone is asking if our MSc has the same value as uh, the masters uh, that are attended on, on the campus, and the answer is yes. Well, the degree certificate, first of all, uh, does not mention online, it does not mention Coursera, so it is exactly the same degree as for our on-campus uh, 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 masters. And another point also, as you can see, Patrick is just coming back from a course, uh, on-campus course, and the professors of our online program are the same ones that are on our on-campus courses. As you can see, the proof is right here. So, uh, so yes, of course, the, the value of our masters is exactly the same. It's just a format, the way of teaching our students, which is different, giving more flexibility for all our international, uh, you know, uh, candidates who are willing to, to join our HEC course. Okay. So how many uh, person, uh, Asian-based students, someone is asking? Well, I, I, I don't know all the statistics by heart, but what I can tell you that there's only 20% of French people, then I think 20% from the US, and the rest is from the, uh, the rest of the planet. So it's a very international program, yes. And we have many Asian uh, candidates and participants right now. Okay, okay, if I'm gonna go back. Okay, so, well, that's it for me. I, I'm just going to launch um, uh, a poll because I would like to know, uh, well, why you are here, why you are coming to, to watch our webinar. And I would be most grateful if you could answer my poll, which is right here. So yes, I can see people are starting. So if everyone can just jump on his mouse and please answer our little poll, that would be very, very helpful for us. Thank you so much in advance. Okay, almost 30% of you have voted. Half a few, still a few seconds of efforts. And yes, well, there's still 40% of you who haven't voted. I would be grateful if you can move a little bit more so that you can, as soon as the poll is finished, you'll be able to listen to Patrick Leblanc. So <laughs> please vote. <laughs> okay, maybe just a few seconds more. We're almost at three fourths. Okay, I think that will be fine. The last one's still hesitant. Okay, thank you for, uh, for, uh, um, for vote, voting. So now I think next step will be for you, Patrick. Are you ready? I wish I could. Okay, well, wonderful. So welcome. welcome. Thank you for being here. And here you go. Okay, bonjour à tous. Hello. Uh, just maybe briefly to introduce myself because I think we be very complementary to what was said before. Uh, I've been teaching here virtually for almost 20 years but it's not my core job. I have been virtually for 25 years in investment banking. Uh, I spent 14 years in Société Générale Global Capital Market Executive Committees, which is a police investment bank. I did the same thing with UBS. I work virtually everywhere, US, uh, Asia, Europe. A few years ago, I set up a partnership where now we advise virtually uh, corporate boards on a transaction financing m and uh, and obviously, teaching is extremely important for me because it's a good way first to share the knowledge and also to continue to, to improve on, on different uh, skills and technical elements and obviously to, to take also your, your feedback. Uh, today, I'm going to show you that virtually uh, finance and value creation is quite simple. I will show you a tool that maybe some of you know, which on one side is very, very simple but it's quite powerful. I will show you virtually how in whatever, 10 minutes, you can address the first dashboard on a company to see if the company is healthy or not, just as when you go to see a doctor, in fact, 10 minutes, he, he's telling you if you're okay or not. And let's go, let's move on this, uh, on this presentation. Okay, then what I propose, let's go directly into the, into the case. Uh, three, what we'll see today 
it's virtually uh, what means value creation. I will be sharing with you what called the Dupont model, which is simple, but when you know it quite well, you can do some very, very interesting things with it. And then we'll be working on a real case study on which we'll be able to uh, virtually analyze this company, built up a dashboard, all this promptly and efficiently. Let's start. I just would like to start with a quiz, which is virtually a uh, few questions to try to understand what is value creation. Then I leave you virtually one, uh, one minute. Try to answer. You can have a few answers if you want, and we'll see exactly what you think. How would you interpret value creation, if any? Okay, so far so good. I see many things flashing on my screen. I see you all rushing on your uh, on your PC. It's fantastic. We need more votes. We have already planted. It's fantastic. Okay, let's. Ah, it's still moving. Excellent. Someone is asking if it's possible to answer H. No way. No. 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 U G is the last one. Okay, let's uh, let's have a look. Uh, obviously, for, for most of you, clients are important. Fair enough, fair enough. But we are going to try to see this with virtually a financial angle. Uh, within the framework of MA, you have some strict definition. You have also strict definition for shareholders and value creation. Obviously, if we were, let's say, in philosophy or in other fields, we could address value creation through many ways, but in finance, it's strict. You have actually four ways to address value creation in finance for the shareholders, for the firm, within the framework of MA, and within the framework of investments. And we're going to try to put all this in practice to see exactly what it means. Let's move directly. This is a quick summary, quick snapshot, but let's go directly to a small game. Uh, I'm going to move quicker on this one. Okay, we're going to move into a game where I'm going to show you virtually two companies, A and B. And the point is that for these two companies, you will have only four sets of data, which are extremely simple. Before having looked to what you will get, you will have sales or revenue, simple. You will have you will have net income, net profit, the second one, which you have the last line of the PL. You will have your total balance sheet, and you will have the equities. And only four items, easy to find. And now maybe let's have a look. Okay, you have, for the two companies, sales, total revenue, net income or net profit, shareholders equity, and the total balance sheet. And my question mark is very, very simple. Let's consider you have two jobs offering. Because you know, when students graduate from HEC, there are many offers, and obviously, most of the time, they, they need to decide where should they go. And this is a very interesting sanity check you have two very nice offers, maybe not yet to be the CEO of the company, but it will come soon. And where will you go? By the way, no worry, no panic. Both companies are interesting. And we'll see exactly which one you prefer and why. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give an inside. Uh, Okay, I'm going to give a bit of inside information on this. Let's not forget that we are all working for our shareholders. We are not working for our boss. Our boss is appointed by shareholders. And by the way, when a company is underperforming, most of the time is because the boss doesn't deliver the strategy which, is, which has been thought by shareholders. Then the inside on this is that net income on equity, return on equity, obviously, 
is the most important item. You know, sometimes some friends who are sitting on board or whatever are calling me, telling me, you know, what do you think? Do you think my company will close down? Do you think my company will expand? And I tell you, I don't have a clue, I don't know. But if you tell me if the return on equity is improving, if your shareholders are happy, for sure they will invest. If shareholders are not happy, it's likely that at some point you will close down the business. Okay, then what are the votes right now? We should restart the votes. We should maybe restart the vote? Yeah. Thank start. you very much. Yes, because uh, yeah, people have been answering the votes in the questions, but if you could please answer the poll. Thank you. Okay, then I see a lot of people being absolutely in love with company A, which is obviously a very high return on equity. It's great. Highest return on equity, A. Again, uh, still the same person is asking for company C. No, 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 no. You cannot vote for company C, please. Okay, then at this stage, it seems that we are 60% 60, 60 company B, 40% company A, maybe a bit of second thought. Let's wait one or two minutes to make sure everybody can, can rethink. Allez, let's, let's close these, and we are two-thirds for B, one-third for A, we'll see exactly which one is the correct one. Let's try to have a view. Obviously, you all want to know which one is important for me, it's best for me. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know. Because both companies are very, very interesting. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, sales are improving for both companies. Company A has a very, very strong momentum in sales, but company B with less sales in 2016 has roughly the same net income, it looks more profitable. But at the end of the day, company A has the highest return on equity. They have only 250 equity, which means that over the time, company A has been distributing some dividends, some distribution, Shareholders are happy, and on the top of this, they have a very strong return on equity. But B, obviously, has other elements. Then what I propose, let's make a break on this case, and I'm going to give you a tool which will allow you to understand exactly which one is the best. Let's try to see this. Uh, within, within the four within these items, okay, what I would like to ask you is that what are the four most important functions or, or stakeholders which make a company? And before answering, try to think. If you want to create a company, you need virtually four stakeholders will be part of the company. Without these four stakeholders, you can't develop the company, whatever the company. You might be willing to set up a shop selling shirts, or you might be willing to set up a big multinational. At the end of the day, that's the same. And I let you thinking, let's start with the poll, and virtually, what are the four items which are the most important to have a company? Don't get me wrong, everything is important, but four items are very, very, very important for the company. All right, we leave still one or two minutes. Interesting because obviously a lot of you consider the management, yes, but at the end of the day, management is part of the assets of the company. Then if I may guide you, nothing wrong with the management, but management is part of the assets. Sometimes, you know, let's take what I'm doing now. The, the advisory businesses we have developed, it's just a partnership with senior people. And at the end of the day, we have nothing. Our company is empty except 
that the assets of the company are a bunch of people who are a bit of experience and we are sharing this experience with clients. Allez, let's stop the, the survey. Uh, obviously, you are all mentioning that clients are absolutely key. Fair enough. Uh, to be frank, I see a second one, which is very, very important, that the assets, whatever they are, assets might be suppliers, might be factories, might be support, might be everybody working in the company. Debt is important as well, because obviously, debt you need for financing. And let's not forget that we are all working for our shoulders. Obviously, last point on clients. What is always very, very interesting, when internally there is a good atmosphere, when people are happy, then clients are happy. If internally people are worried, frankly, clients will not be happy and it will reflect on the performance for shoulders. Then let's have a look to the results, please. Results, obviously, four main uh, stakeholders, clients, assets, debt, shareholders. Obviously, nothing wrong with the other, but it's one key. We are going to try to put all this into a methodology. First and foremost, any company is made by shareholders. Then, obviously, we need to find clients. We need to have assets to give the proper product or service to clients. And then, obviously, shareholders bring money, bring resources, but most of the time, it's not enough. And they leverage their business through that. Then here, you have the four main stakeholders of any company. Sometimes people are mentioning states, government. Sometimes states can be one of the shareholders. But at the end of the day, I think all of us, we, are, we have to pay our taxes. We pay them. But I'm, I will not say that every morning we get up with a massive priority to pay our taxes. OK, then so now that we have defined our four assets, four stakeholders, sorry, let's try to put this in practice. Which indicators are relevant for these stakeholders? Then we have four stakeholders, I repeat, the shareholders, the main one, the clients, the assets, and the last one, the equity leverage of the debt. Then let's try to link now virtually the different stakeholders with indicators. Which indicator would be the most interesting? I see many people who have started to answer entertainment with clients. Yes, for sure, but no, you know, I'm not absolutely convinced. This is a priority. Obviously, you have to take care of your clients, but I'm not so sure entertainment with clients is a priority. Okay, someone is saying as well, playing golf with clients. No, 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 no. This one is not a part of the answer. You can go and play golf with your clients. Obviously, it's good, but not in this list. Allez, let's have a look to the answer to see where we are. Allez, one minute and we close, uh, we close the uh, survey. Right, let's close the survey and we do it. Okay, then let's see exactly where we are. Obviously, the four most important items, it's asset turnover. With your assets, you make more sales or less sales. Return on equity, are your shareholders happy? Equity leverage, with your equity, are you adding on the top a lot of debt or not a net margin? What is the profitability with your clients? Now let's try. Do you have any questions? Can, can we have questions? Yes, yes the questions are uh, here. We can see. Okay, can okay, let's have a look. Do you have any questions? Anything you would like me uh, to, to address? Any yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's more comments on the previous okay. poll. Okay, 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 sure, sure, sure. Why would the staff turnover not be relevant? 
Because virtually your staff turnover would mean virtually, okay, it's, it's interesting, but at the end of the day, staff turnover means how many people are leaving from the company. It's interesting, but initially it's not key. If I run a business, I want first to see with the assets, what is revenue? And is this revenue profitable? So if, if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to, to ask them in the conversation window and we'll be answering them uh, regularly. So please don't hesitate, ask your questions. Okay, All right. we continue. Then now we are putting this all together. We start having some clear, easy indicators, return on equity for the shareholders, net margin for the business with clients, asset turnovers for your, how much revenue you make with your assets, and equity leverage. And now we have been making a big, big, big step. It means that return on equity is a combination of these three. And you know why? You know what? It looks complex, it's not. It's so simple, so crystal clear. Let's have a look. We have our four main stakeholders. And now, you guys, you are all extremely smart, and you will see exactly what I'm going to. We start with return on equity. We have net profit on equity, net profit on sales, sales on total assets. With your assets, how much revenue are you making? and your total balance sheet. Just one thing, read total liabilities as total liabilities, including equity. Important, it's not only that, total balance sheet, total liabilities, including equity, divided by equity. And why it becomes like magic, we have this. And obviously, we have on the left net profit on equity, and on the right, obviously it simplifies, sells total balance sheet, and we have net profit on equity. And now, where we made a big move, when we think about return on equity, we can split it into net margins. Is our business profitable? With our assets, how much revenue are we making? And then with our equity, did we borrow a lot on it? And what I propose, we are now going to use this tool to revert and to analyze our two companies, A and B. Obviously, you know, by the way, huh? don't learn this. What I'm, you know, the HEC uh, Master in Finance, Smith, has been ranked now for a few years, first Master in Finance in the world. Uh, and to be frank, what we said to students, make sure you don't learn any formula by heart. Because if you learn by heart, for sure in two weeks it's forgotten. If you understand, you will keep it forever. And this, Virtually, what you need to keep is that the most important is net profit on equity. We are all working for our shareholders, all working for our shareholders. And now, easy to split this. We start with net profit, we end up with equity. And obviously, we balance, we sell sales, total balance sheet. And here we are. It's very, very great. Allez. We go back, let's move on, and we are going to apply this model to our two companies. Here we are. And now, obviously, we have all the tools, all the indicators, and when we have a look to this, I let you have a quick look to make sure you, you can understand exactly what's going on, and obviously, the, the next, my next question will be, what do you think? Which company do you prefer? Do you prefer company A? Do you prefer company B? And we will expand on this. Okay, then I give you the time to, to read the virtue, to read the, the figures. In your mind, obviously, decide the next, when we move on, you will be asked which one do you prefer between A and B. Obviously, you know, company A has a great momentum in, to, in terms of return on equity. Shareholders are very, very happy. Allez, let's go to the survey, please. Then A or B. A 
Okay, obviously you, you all like very, very much company A. Okay, I'm going to do a trick. If you have me as a professor, I give you an insight, huh? so read, read inside. If you have me as a professor, any obvious answer is a wrong one. When we think during the class, it's always good to try to brainstorm in many directions and be careful. Maybe the most obvious answer is not the correct one. Ah, some people are reviewing their... Uh, Votes are being yeah, yeah, sure, 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 by sure. the tone of the voice. Sure. <laughs> there is a trick. Okay, then we are roughly two thirds A, one third B. Okay, let's, let's try to understand this. Okay, we stop it. Okay, two thirds, one third, and let's have a look now to the solution. Okay, company B, in fact, is the best. Company B is the best. And it's interesting because it doesn't look like it is the best. When we have a look to this, frankly, company A is fantastic. Let's have a look. Company A looks great. Return on equity is improving. Shoulders are very, very happy. But frankly, let's make it blunt. Everything is a disaster. Net margin is collapsing. With one euro of assets, they make less and less sales. Before, with one euro of assets, they were making 272 euro of sales with 11% margin. Now they make 196 of sales with 3.5 of margin. And where it is a real drama, they are borrowing more and more and more. And you know what? When you borrow more, you have more financial cost, and at the same time, the profitability is falling. Frankly, this company is a prime candidate for bankruptcy. Company B is a great company. Shareholders are not so happy because return on equity is falling, but margin is improving, asset turnover is improving, and they reduce their debt. It's a very, 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 very safe company. So obviously, you see that with this tool, you can immediately a very interesting dashboard. Then what I propose, I told you that with this tool in five minutes, five, you can build up a dashboard on a company. And you know, I just would like to make again a parallel. Okay, finance a little bit complex, but not too complex. Frankly, one of the jobs for who I have massive respect, it's when you're a doctor. It's far, far more complex, I think, to be a doctor than to do finance. When you go and see a doctor, frankly, in five, 10 minutes, the guy will tell you if you're okay or not okay. We are going to do exactly the same thing with the company. Let's move into the company. We move directly to this. Ah, less, more complicated. If I am asking you, what do you think about this company? Good luck. And you know what? We are going to apply our magic tool. What is a magic tool? We need four sets of information. Sales, net profit. To be frank, you can take the last line. Technically, we take before minority interest, to be correct, but take the last line if you want, that's the same. I take the total balance sheet, last line, and total equity for data. And now, copy and paste. Here we are. We put our four lines. We compute, and here we are. And now, what do you think of this fantastic company? Don't forget. Normally, you should answer the opposite of what I'm saying. And this company obviously looks fantastic. It's great. Allez. What do you think of the company? What I propose, we are going to make the analysis together. You have the return on equity, which is very, very low. On average, shareholders expect roughly 8 to 10% return on equity. Shareholders cannot be happy with only 3% return on equity. Net margin is a disaster, it's collapsing. 
Okay, as set turnover is improving a little bit, it means that they are selling more. But at the end of the day, with so much margin, well, such low margin, frankly, it's bad. And last, they try to reduce their debt, but these guys are trapped. And we see that immediately, their big, big, big concern is net margin. And you see that we move just in a few minutes from accounts which were virtually impossible to analyze into a very, very simple dashboard. By the way, the power of this dashboard is that if you show this to someone who is educated in finance, we can go really far. We can do a lot of analysis behind this. If you show this to someone virtually never learn or doesn't know anything in finance, you'll understand immediately that shareholders are less and less happy, mainly because the net margin of the company is falling. Well, then frankly, you know absolutely everything now. It's fantastic. Okay, I left five, 10 minutes to see if you have any question. Voila. You have my email address if you have any question. Uh, do you have any question, anything I could uh, either help you? Or even, you know, the, let's say the finance industry. Actually, I, I would, I would yeah, love sure, to sure. hear you sure. to come back to our MSIE, our Master in Innovation and sure, Entrepreneurship. Sure. I would like to, to, you to talk to, to us about your experience, about the live webinars, about the course, about the, uh, the MSIE, okay. which is okay. something which is totally innovative sure, sure. to have the degree. And how do you find the interaction with the students Sure. Or only online. Sure. You know what? I'm not going to answer your question immediately. Just to just to because we are always playing this game with uh, with. Her. In fact, when I was in investment bank, very often we had startups which were coming to ask for financing to the bank, and these companies were far too small for the bank. Then myself, after the bank said, no, 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 no way, pressing the corporate to the startup, I'm going to have it. And in the last well, 15 years, sometimes I've been investing in startups. Sometimes it has been a disaster. Sometimes it has been a success. What is interesting is that we try to make more success than a disaster. And now to revert to your question, what I love virtually in all these forums, all these exchange with students is that on one side, we have some really good students, very, very smart. And on my side, at the end of the day, yes, I teach. Yes, I bring methodology fundamentals. But first and foremost, I share my experience of peer investors, private equity, what is going well, what is not working, what are the tools. And virtually, as a rule, if I summarize, I teach only what I'm using. Obviously, we, we are doing some, uh, let's say I give you some academic tools, some fundamental tools, but only if I can translate this in real life. And then obviously, I think these exchanges are always very, very interesting because in these webinars, I always give some real case studies on which I work myself. By the way, Monsieur Bricolage, the account for Monsieur Bricolage, we advised them a few years ago and he gave me the idea to make a case on that. Then like, these exchanges are always very interesting because we combine experience, teaching, and most of the time, I have as well students who are sharing with me virtually their experience of uh, either entrepreneur or sometimes investor. And do the students continue exchanging uh, with you yeah, once sure. they have graduated? Sure, sure, sure. It's, it's very good, absolutely. No, no, sure. That's sure. wonderful. No, no, absolutely. Okay. So any more questions maybe on the conversation? We still have a few minutes. Maybe is it on the MSIE you have questions or on Patrick's presentation? Any remarks, comments? And you know, by the way, you are very, very lucky because it's very, very likely you will be experiencing the next few weeks, maybe we'll mm -hmm. see, maybe a real time crash on the market, which is always yes, very interesting. Already it's always very It's already happening. Yeah, but it's, that's the beginning. That's just the beginning. For sure. Just For sure. The Any advice for someone who wants to start a business? 
you know what? Uh, it's not what you what you want to hear. But when I see people having startup projects or startups, first and foremost, I'm looking, if I may say, to two indicators, which are not the one you're expecting. Number one, is the entrepreneur, if I may say, mad enough to push his story? As is the, the energy, the willing to make it? And secondly, quote and quote, do I really almost, you know, do I like very much, do I quote and quote almost love virtually the entrepreneur? And if you have the two, if I think the guy is the energy, the vision, and if I think really he has something fantastic for which I'm really almost addicted, normally it's successful. That certainly is the most important. And if you have this, develop your business. Okay. Thank you. There was voilà. another question um, that I saw someone was asking if the model that you were presenting could be uh, applicable to an artistic company. So, I mean, is, is the model you were presenting? Normally, normally it works for all companies, even okay. in the banking industry, mm -hmm. any company, whatever, it's a shop selling shirts, or it's a bank or multinational, it works. After we can develop it. And so this model can be expanded quite a lot. Okay, someone is asking a question about the difference for MSIE of the fundamental courses and the project-based courses. Well, fundamental courses are online with a few live webinars such as this one, and they're really the basics and well, the fundamentals about innovation and entrepreneurship. And then the courses become more specific because you are working on the courses and on parallel you're working on an, on an idea of a project of an entrepreneurial venture to the business plan, so then the courses get much more specific. So if you want to know more about the detail uh, about our masters, well, the best thing is I'll go to the next slide, is you can contact us and we can sell you for, we can send you, for example, the syllabus with the detailed contact of all of our courses. And well, you have my telephone and the telephone of my other colleague who is a program advisor to our email and well, just send your questions to us. So for those who are planning to start an application or have already started an application for our masters, please bear in mind that we have this incentive, which is still valid till next Monday, March 2nd, and you can get a thousand euros on the, the discount on the total of the free. So maybe we can go back if there are any other questions, um, Patrick, uh, if you would be wanting sure. to answer anything. And obviously, you know, I will remain available Then you have my email address. If you have any, if you have any question, I'm happy to follow up with you. Uh, There's one maybe nimbus question in your, in your experience and opinion, what is the role of leadership in entrepreneurship and innovation? And how can these studies prepare us become better leaders in these areas? I'm finding it difficult to combine multiple perspectives like inside firm, shareholder, technology, technological and client. Okay, many, many subjects, but okay, let's, let's make it simple. There are some companies where the staff is very, very happy, are very, very happy. Where the management is really close to their staff and so on. Normally, these companies are successful and the clients are happy. And you have some companies where it's completely the opposite. You will have the management speaking about human value, but they don't even say hello in a building or you never hear from them. And obviously it's a disaster. It starts with virtually the staff being unhappy and the client being unhappy. Then virtually the role of leadership, first and foremost, is to take care of the people, of their people. And obviously, you must have the vision, but if you have the right people who are committed, the vision will be implemented. And you know, the other part of the story, personally, I don't think there are bad people. Most people, when they arrive in the morning, they are really willing to do very, very, very well. If you take care of them, they will give you the best. If you treat them badly, it will be the other way. And to this answer, first and foremost, it's you are taking care of your people, whatever it's a startup or it's a huge company. Definitely. Mindful leaders well, are the best. Exactly. Any Anything? more questions? Because um, I think we're running in time. Sure. Because we have another course. Exactly. I, I go. I go now to Grand Ecole to teach you a class on M and A. Okay. 
Okay. So. Uh, and I can tell you, I will be teaching a, a case on the Glencore Xrata, which happened a few years ago, on which we did a few things, which is mm -hmm. quite interesting. Wonderful. My means. My means. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks to all of you, and I remain available if needed. Huh? And thank you, Patrick, thank for you, being with us. It was a thank pleasure. You thank you, thank Andrea, our tech thank boy. You. Thank you very much. And hope to see you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you.